Hello, and welcome to another Young Heretics special. Those of you who've been watching the show for a while know that although our main focus is the long history and great principles of the West and the Western canon, um, we like to check in with the real world and the present every now and then um, to just talk to people who are on the front lines of some of the big political fights of our day, some of the big philosophical fights of our day over the principles specifically of this country, of America, uh, because of course these great ideas aren't just like abstractions floating out in the middle of nowhere. They're actually, you know, real matters that we that we care deeply about in our in our personal lives and in our public life. Um, and today I'm really delighted to be joined by Kristen Hawkins. Um, she's the leader of Students for Life America, which is one of the major pro life groups, especially on on campuses with with students and young people. Um, you guys know that this is an issue that's that's dear to my heart, that's that's close to my heart, the pro life cause. Obviously, we don't you know, go on long political rants in the main episodes of the show. But actually, abortion and the fight for life is a really crucial issue uh, that touches on some of the deepest principles of, of the West and the principles on which this country was founded. And that's basically the premise of Student for Life's new battle plan. It's called the Final Fight for Freedom. And the idea behind this here is that, you know, essentially, as, as we've discussed at length on the show, right, our uh, our country is, is founded on these inalienable rights, the rights to life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Um, these are the things that God gives you that no government can take away. Governments exist. The American government exists or is supposed to exist to protect these things. Um, and one of them is comes before all others, and that's life. You cannot have any other right without life. In fact, James Madison connected life and property rights very closely, precisely because without your life, you can't have freedom of speech. You can't speak. You are voiceless, literally voiceless. Um, and, and everything else is taken away. And, you know, throughout our history, we've had to fight to make these rights real. The Declaration of Independence is a promissory note. It promises that these rights will be protected by the government. Um, we live in a broken and fallen in world. It hasn't always been that way. And so we've had to have major fights for freedom. We had to have a fight with the British Empire, or the biggest empire uh, at the time in the world. We had to go up against them and risk life and limb. Our ancestors did. Um, and then, of course, we had to have the second great fight for freedom in the Civil War. Hundreds of thousands dead and blood spilled to ensure that the right to life, first and foremost, for all Americans is guaranteed. Nobody can take that away from you. It comes from God. And this is why, of course, I care about abortion so much, because now today we have a, a final fight for freedom, as, as Students for Life is saying, uh, to defend the right to life of those who are unborn. Abraham Lincoln, when he was speaking to Congress um, about the fight for freedom for the slaves, um, said something crucially important. He said, in giving freedom to the slave, we assure freedom to the free, honorable alike in what we give and what we preserve. And what he meant by that is that if somebody else's rights aren't free, then nobody's rights are secure. If, if somebody else doesn't have the right to life, then ultimately slavery and death follow. That's the premise of this campaign. Um, I want to play their ad, which uh, they just released an awesome ad. Uh, let, let's cue that up now and then we'll talk to Kristen. Is abortion ever the right choice? The label pro-choice strips all meaning from the word choice. It leaves us pitting the stronger versus the weaker. The final fight for freedom in America is raging. But it's not just about socialism, or BLM, or Antifa. Our culture is having an important discussion about the civil rights of minority groups. So why don't we recognize the most fundamental right for the most marginalized among us? Students for Life is fighting for the rights of the preborn on campuses and in communities every day. When it comes to abortion, the right to choose literally means choosing to take away the future from another human being. Choosing abortion harms both a mother and child and leads to suffering, subjugation, and death. Yet that's the choice some want to make and others want to force you to fund with tax dollars. And that's what we're up against in this fight. It all starts with life, the prerequisite for all other rights. When this right is upheld, all of our other natural rights have the opportunity to fill our lives with meaning. When it's undermined, history shows us that the end is slavery, oppression, and even death. At Students for Life, we're an army, an entire generation who could have been aborted for the price of a PlayStation. 
That's more than 1,300 campuses strong. Why does that matter? Because this is where our final fight begins and ends. Young people are making choices about pregnancy every day, and they look to their peers for advice in these formative independent years. Well, young people are targeted constantly by the abortion industry as they make choices about pregnancy every day. So we go right where they are. And our student leaders, they are bold. As they don't just stay on campuses supporting women and changing policies, they go into communities across the nation, door by door, providing tangible support for mothers, changing minds and electing those who will stand with us. Campuses and abortion facilities, in person and online, we recruit, train, and mobilize the pro-life generation with the hopes that we will someday soon become the first post-Roe v. Wade generation. So don't stand by while the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness of the next generation of Americans are erased. A choice to kill should never be celebrated, subsidized, or even legal. Will you join us in this fight? Go to studentsforlife.org slash fight to get your free copy of our battle plan to win this fight and make a difference today. All right, Kristen Hawkins, leader of Students for Life America. Welcome to Young Heretics. It's so great to have you here. Thanks for having me. I'd love to just talk with you first a little bit about why this moment is so crucial. The timing of this new campaign sure. is not a mistake. Uh, there, you know, this is a, a central moment in your view for the pro-life cause. Tell me why. Yeah, I mean, I think for, you know, those Americans who maybe don't like to talk about abortion, the question really isn't, you know, if we're going to be talking about abortion in the weeks and months and years to come, it's going to be where we're going to be talking about abortion. And the Supreme Court has, you know, taken up a case. If you haven't been following this case, it's called Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization. They heard oral arguments on December 1st. If you want to be completely... Um, dumbfounded. You can listen to these oral arguments and listen to Justice Sotomayor, one of the most well-educated women in our country, literally trying to tell um, a Solicitor General of Mississippi that life doesn't begin at conception and that that is only a religious view. But anyway, this, this is a significant case. The fact that the court even heard this case means that there's a willingness on the court to reconsider Roe, to potentially reverse Roe, sending the decision of abortion back to the states. They're going to be issuing their decision on the case at the end of June, at the end of the term. Um, you know, they could move to uphold the Mississippi law, which bans abortions at 15 weeks when children feel pain, which would then allow other states throughout the country to ban second trimester abortions as well as third trimester. Or they can move and do what kind of was being alluded to in the oral arguments was uh, being neutral on the issue of abortion because the Constitution is neutral on the issue of abortion. Um, and so this is this is a big moment for us in the pro-life movement. Um, this, you know, we're going to be mourning this 49th year, this 49th anniversary of Roe versus Wade. We've just launched into what's going to be the 50th year of, of legal abortion in our country, abortion up until the moment of birth uh, for any reason. So it's, it's really time. And that's why we thought now is the time to release this battle plan to give the rest of America, you know, the, this peak of what we've been building towards for 50 years um, and what we're continuing to work for as we go into a post-Roe America and then beyond. Because the, as you know, Spencer, the battle for life won't be over at that moment. No, indeed. I'm glad you mentioned Justice Sotomayor, a woman who seems to think she's a toaster, um, which I joke about, but it actually speaks to exactly what we're discussing, both in those oral arguments that you mentioned and in the argument over the vaccine mandate recently. That's right. <laughs> um, she really did articulate a, you know, a, a postmodern view of human life, that there's no difference between humans and machines, um, right. that you know, reacting to pain doesn't prove you're alive. I mean, these things are are truly sinister, and they're they've been, as you say, kind of the reigning dogma of our public life on this issue um, for for nigh on on fifty years. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your own story and how you you know how this issue came to mean so much to you? Sure, you know I was raised in a pretty conservative uh, small town in West Virginia. Um, I remember my mom talking about abortion. 
when, you know, when I was in high school, I would have considered myself, you know, kind of in that mushy middle of, I don't like abortion, but, you know, what if I were raped? But what if I would become pregnant and I would have to drop out of school? Um, it wasn't really until I was asked to volunteer at a women's center, uh, what's mm. known as a crisis pregnancy center, a pregnancy resource center, um, to come in to volunteer. I had no idea what I was signing myself up for. Uh, but I entered that, that center and that summer, for an entire summer, learned everything there was to know about the violence happening within abortion facilities and Planned Parenthoods across the country, seeing the women who are coming into the center who had already experienced an abortion, had already paid for abortion, who are right back to where they began, um, again in crisis, again living with an abusive boyfriend, still in poverty, still without a college or high school degree. Um, and, and that's really where I formed my pro-life beliefs, realizing that, you know, this this act of violence that occurs 2,363 times every single day can never be justified um, because not only does it deprive, you know, this innocent child of their life, which is, you know, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. It's the fundamental right in the hierarchy of rights, um, but it also deprives her and the entire family uh, of, of meeting that individual and hurts them as the abortion industry is just preying off of this crisis. One of the things that that story drives home for me is that, you know, this isn't only an issue for religious people. You, you touched right. on this, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm a religious person and I believe that the right to life comes from God, as I said, but, you know, a, a lot of folks are realizing that even if you've never stepped foot in a church in your life, this is still about you, right? Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, the, the, these That's fundamental right. rights are either for everybody or, or they're for nobody. Um, are, are you seeing that kind of union across faiths yes. in the pro-life movement? Do you think that people are getting on board, even if maybe they're not Christians or part of some, you know, pre-established church? I mean, I think, you know, Spencer, the demographics of Gen Z and Gen Y are very broad. We are the most, you know, I guess you could say the least church generation. Generation That brings a whole host of problems when we talk about a lot of things because we're so many do not have even a Christian worldview on college and high school campuses. Um, but when we're on campuses, and that's what we do, we go to college and high school campuses, meeting those who are marketed to by the abortion industry, engaging them in conversations about abortion. For even those who call themselves atheists or say that they're questioning or agnostic, even those students, we have, you know, commonality because they, they understand that life is valuable. And, and even more so, you know, if you're talking with an honest, you know, atheist, of this is your only life. Uh, of mm -hmm. course, it should be valuable. Um, and we've seen alumni of Students for Life, actually, have one of our former fellows who went on to start a whole organization called Secular Pro-Life, which is, you know, atheist agnostics who go and speak to other atheist agnostics about why they should be fundamentally pro-life, because you're denying these entities that have, you know, in their view, no other no mm. other life, no afterlife, that fundamental right. Mm. Okay, so yeah, tell me about the work sort of on the ground. As you said, you know, once you overturn Roe, there's still, you know, a, a world of work to be done. What, what does that look like? And how are you guys pushing that forward? Sure. I mean, you'll see right now, especially in the talking points of the left and the fundraising emails you get from Planned Parenthood and the rhetoric and the hostile behavior of Antifa and those on college campuses who vandalize or threaten our events or displays, they're they're very passionate and very elevated right now because they fear this day we, we believe is very near. And that is the reversal of Roe. But that is not uh, the end of our fight. That simply allows the decision of abortion to go back to state legislature where it belongs, where, by the way, our own polling uh, just this week proves eight out of 10 uh, Gen Z or Gen Ys want a vote on abortion policy. Yeah. And they say this is broadly popular. Yeah. This is going to go back to the state. So we have to have, you know, a 50 state battle prepared. And this is why we launched Students for Life 15 years ago, recognizing too much of the fight for against abortion and the violence of abortion was just in Washington, D.C. We need in every state capital trained activists who could go lobby, testify, advance 
pro-life legislation to ban or heavily restrict abortion in their state, but then also to serve because in the pro-life movement, it's about making abortion illegal, but also unthinkable. And those two things have to go hand in hand. So for example, at Students for Life, we've been going door to door in communities for the past year, educating neighbors about the violence happening inside of the abortion facility down the street from them, and then showing them the nonviolent alternatives that exist in our community, which by the way, no one knows actually exists. The pro-life wow. movement vastly outnumbers the pro-abortion movement in terms of activists and resources on the ground. Yet no one in these communities that we, I mean, I was door knocking in Denver not long ago, surrounding an abortion facility and pregnancy center. And every person I spoke to in the neighborhood knew that the late term abortion facility was there. The Planned Parenthood was there. No one knew about the pregnancy center that was across the street that provided way more care, well women care, family care, free Uber rides, every resource a woman would need who was in crisis. No one knew they existed. And that stuff, when they when they learn that, it starts to change their minds because that rhetoric they hear, you know, from the abortion industry that makes them kind of squash the queasy feeling they get in their gut when they have to say that they're okay with abortion, um, that changes all of that. Mm, wow. Yeah. I mean, something that you touched on very movingly in your own personal story is the pain that abortion causes to women who have them, the regret, the sure. shame, the, you know, and, sure. and, and, and the anguish. And, and I think that this is a major slander of the, you know, pro-abortion lobby, that the pro-life movement just doesn't care about women at all, right? That if they, if you really cared about women, you would care about, you know, the uh, resources for adoption and all of this stuff, which of course is a major dimension of the pro-life movement. And I know that you guys have, you know, a, a heart for that as well, mm -hmm. not just for sure. making abortion unthinkable, but for making the alternatives more uh, available. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the programs you have in, in that dimension? Sure. In our Fight for Freedom battle plan that we just released, you can go to studentsforlife.org slash fight to download your copy. It's free. Um, we actually have a six-point battle plan. You know, the first is obviously reversing Roe versus Wade and leading that fight. That's why so much of the pro-life movement's energy has been focused on uh, winning, uh, you know, the pro-life Senate and the pro-life presidency, why 2020, 2016, you saw a mass amount of pro-lifers getting involved, donating, knocking on doors in these elections. But it's deeper than that, as you just mentioned. It's also about promoting adoption and foster care reforms, supporting women uh, in crisis on campuses and in the workplaces. Um, you know, electing leaders at the state house level, preparing for that post road day. There, there's a lot that we have to do. And the, the pro-life movement is very broad, a very diverse movement. And there's so many places where folks can plug in. And that's why I'm so excited about the battle plan because I'm hoping folks see it and they say, wow, there is some place for me to get involved in defending this fine, you know, these, these rights to life uh, and getting involved in this final fight. Yeah, you know, as a civic matter, I think a, a huge part of the damage Roe did, obviously the toll in, in deaths is kind of un, unthinkable. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, just as a matter of, of you know, American civic life, uh, one of the things it did is it basically put this cap onto a debate that Americans were ready to have. I mean, this is how sure. we're supposed to have these conversations in, in our, in our polity. We're supposed to be able to vote on things and, you know, talk state by state, locality by locality. And the Supreme Court just kind of invented a reason to shut all of that down, yes. um, which is a, a major reason why we're at each other's throats on so many issues. It's just because we feel as if there's no way to get a, our point across except by screaming at each other and, you know, and shaking our fists. Hopefully, Roe gets overturned and that situation changes, which means also that this culture of just kind of fear and intimidation will hopefully uh, relax. Although there's also the, the possibility of... You're a lot more hopeful than I am, Spencer, on that. I was going to say, right, because there's also this, this counter movement. I think summer will be, you know, there will be violence if Roe is reversed. Okay. And the, those on the other side, they've actually been ginning up their base to prepare for this. And we saw it at the Women's March. Every single Women's March, Students for Life has been there countering the Women's March, offering a post support of healing resources. And this October, I mean, our staff were assaulted. Um, mm. You know, it, it was it was a it was it was very dangerous. We had pregnant staff members who were one was thrown to the ground. It was unbelievable. I was wow. 
um, beside myself thinking like just the change in the past four years where you, you once used to be able to go peacefully hold a sign that disagreed and people might shout or curse at you, maybe at worst spit at you. And now they surround you, shout you down and start shoving you. Um, and, right. and so the dis- discourse has gotten um, into it's it's a very it's a very bad place. So I think when we look at a post row world. Um, and we see Roe being reversed this summer, I think we can see those on the other side who advocate for the violence of abortion to really gin up their base. And, and, and the question a lot of folks have is why? Why would people do this? Like, why would you go out into a public forum and start shouting and have these hold these vile signs and really just make a fool out of yourself on national TV? But what we have to remember especially uh, those of us who maybe haven't had abortions, is that you have a whole country of hurting women. You have women who for 50 years have been told that killing their child is a right. And they kind of in their gut knew it was wrong, but they also had something pressing, you know, a deadline, college, getting their high school diploma, a boyfriend, a family member pressuring them. And so they went ahead with that abortion anyway. And so when you when they hear those of us who advocate against the violence of abortion say abortion should be illegal, cheering the reversal of Roe, um, it triggers all of those feelings back again of maybe I shouldn't have had my abortion. And that is why you'll see them uh, animated, acting crazy on the streets. And, and that I think that sh- is helpful for us to keep in mind, to have compassion for those people um, and to be there to witness and, and to love and to pray for them, because um, you will have a lot of hurting people, a lot of hurting families um, when, you know, the, the law for some, for, for some and for many is a teacher. Um, and so when the law no longer says that this is a right, um, they're going to have a lot of people who have to come to terms with the past decision that they've made. Yeah, I think, you know, the that uh, the crucial element of compassion for for folks that have been swept up into this Mm -hmm. industry is is so is so important. And you're right. I mean, there are in addition to all of those those hurting women and families that you describe, there are also unfortunately people who profit off of that pain and who have responded to that profit by making a a religion out of it. I mean, this kind of weird fervor. Um, And and so it takes an enormous amount of, of courage to do what you're doing. Um, and, and uh, it's, it's amazing to me that people in generation Z and this pro-life generation are, are showing that courage. I mean, is that something that has surprised you? Have you, have you been, you know, thinking about how to help support them in that Mm -hmm. against, you know, whatever they may face the violence and all of that? I think it surprises the hell out of the pro-abortion movement, so I think it surprises <laughs> yeah, them. Okay. Um, yes, I mean, th- that is why we launched 15 years ago at Students for Life, was to support this pro-life generation, because I was a high school student who found out the truth about abortion through volunteering at this women's center and wanted to do something. And I remember how hard it was to get my pro-life group started and the scorn I faced and, you know, what what happened. I remember trying to do it in college. And so, you know, the number one thing we often hear from pro-life students when they're at the March for Life, they're at the National Pro-Life Summit, which we always hold the day after the March for Life, which is like the world's largest pro-life training. And, mm. and the comments we always hear from students is, I don't feel alone anymore. That mm-hmm. so often these young people feel alone. And so we want them to know that with Students for Life, no one stands no alone. No pregnant woman on campus stands alone. No pro-life student stands alone. We've been through through this. We will help you get through. And that's why we have staff spread out across the country who literally will go show up at a campus, train a group of young people, host an event. We've got, you know, free legal counsel lawyers on staff ready, you know, ready and waiting for discrimination, for vandalization, for anything to happen, because we'll always have your back. And that is why we've seen this explosive growth of the of pro-life generation. When we launched 15 years ago, I could name maybe 50 active pro-life student groups on college and high school campuses. Today, we are honored to serve over 1,300, and we've trained wow. over 130,000 young people. So they're literally everywhere. Wow. Wow. No, it's very moving to see. And and as you say, you have their back. I, um, I, I've got one last question that is kind of a, you know, a what if, which is uh, what if Roe isn't overturned, mm-hmm. right? I mean, because that's, that's right. it's not impossible. As you said, there's a lot of different outcomes here. Um, what's the plan then? 
Sure. Well, I mean, go to studentsforlife.org slash fight and you can download our free battle plan because the sure. battle plan doesn't change. It's not dependent on a row reversal. The, the steps that we've been taking, the army we've been building, how we've been setting out our army of trained pro-life activists, that doesn't change. You know, you think about what the abortion industry has been doing during the COVID crisis. They have used the COVID crisis to advance chemical abortion to now, um, next time we get a national report of abortion from the CDC or Guttmacher, chemical abortion will become the number one, the most dominant type of abortion in our country. And this is a brutal, dangerous abortion. But the abortion industry has been using COVID uh, to skirt the laws. They've been, you know, giving out these drugs without even seeing patients, you know, citing COVID concerns, without even confirming she's pregnant in the first place, which is could be deadly for her to take this drug, not without even confirming the location of the pregnancy, meaning confirming she's not experiencing atomic pregnancy. And which will kill her if she doesn't seek immediate care. Um, they have been using this. The Biden administration just before the end of the year came out um, and said, you know, they were getting rid of all common safety regulations on chemical abortion. You have to think about this. The same day the FDA pulled the Johnson Johnson vaccine last April because one person died, the same day they they put a halt to it, the same exact day they came out and said, we're going to be loosening all standards on chemical abortion pills, which we know have already killed over 24 women. And that's without a national abortion reporting law. So we actually don't know how many women die from these drugs. But we know the adverse side effects, 5 to 8% of women who you know take these drugs are going to end up in the emergency room. Up to 15% are still going to have to go get a surgical abortion because the abortion isn't going to work. I mean, it is unbelievable. So we've been fighting this for three years at Students for Life. In the pro-life movement, we've got, you know, state laws we've getting passed and signed. We're fighting on campuses with education. That doesn't change because even when Roe is reversed, the abortion industry already has their backup plan. Their backup plan is a pharmacist in California ships chemical abortion to the girl in Mississippi who's banned abortion. How are we going to fight that? And so the game, you know, the game really remains the same. Right. Yeah, this is a far cry from safe, legal, and rare, the situation that you're describing. But we're aiming for illegal and unthinkable, which— uh, They don't use rare anymore, by the way. They, they cut out that Clinton mantra, safe, legal, accessible is what now they shout at me at campuses. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, that is a small surprise if you've been reading the tea leaves. But um, Kristen, thanks so much for, for being with us. One more time, you're listening to Kristen Hawkins, leader of Students for Life of America. Uh, you can go to studentsforlife.org forward slash fight to download their new battle plan and find out how you can get involved. I really hope you will. Thanks, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you. 